This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on October the 26th, 2015. Enjoy! On this edition of Computer Club Lesson, we have a special guest speaker, Detective Sergeant Michael Page from the Hamilton Police Services, is here to speak to us about scams that are targeting seniors, uh, what the scams look like, how you can protect yourself uh, if you're approached with some sort of a scam. This edition of Computer Club Lesson, the audio portion went very, very bad. I fixed it up as best I could. Please put up with it. This is an important video. Thank you. Hello. Welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, we're the Hamilton Police Service now, not Hamilton Wentworth Regional. That was uh, that was a few years ago. Um, but um, <clears throat> I've been in uh, this unit, the Crimes Against Seniors Unit, uh, for five years. And I was a senior support officer prior to that uh, uh, for three years. Uh, so on and off, eight, eight years investigating these types of crimes. Uh, I can tell you, uh, I came into this unit in 2003. Uh, it could go on and off for eight years, but in 2003, the scams I see now are incredible compared to what we did back then. We did uh, uh, air purifiers, vacuum cleaners, uh, home renovation scams, that type of stuff. That was what we did. Uh, none of this stuff. This is all new, and you got to be prepared for this because your information's out there, especially when you're on the internet. And we'll we'll talk as we go a little bit uh, go along a little bit here. So we see this, um, you say we have uh, senior support officers, that's one officer per division. We have three divisions in the police service. And we have um, we have our unit, Crimes Against Seniors Unit. So we do everything. We do all uh, all crimes when you're, as uh, if you're targeted because of your age. Okay. And uh, so we see uh, people living in conditions where they're not, in the best conditions, and maybe a caregiver isn't looking after them properly. Um, when it comes to a criminal level, that's when we deal with it. Uh, we deal with it otherwise uh, because uh, um, because it, it's a problem that has to get dealt with eventually. But uh, we're usually the first ones in the door because we get a uniform on most of the time. And uh, but the the main thing that we see is fraud, money. <laughs> Leave a note. Um, <laughs> so we see fraud as the number one crime against seniors, okay, and uh, a lot of times you're not aware that you're a victim, and uh, when you do find out, it's usually too late, and uh, there's money gone, and con artists uh, will take money and give, uh, take your money and give you little or nothing in return, and we'll talk a little bit about this as we go along, because it seems kind of odd that that happens, but it does. And the, the main thing is, if you have something that sounds too good to be true, it is. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> so, for fraud to be successful, uh, the conduct has to gain your trust. Okay, and that goes for anything. It goes for a, like a home renovation scam, a roofing scam, a driveway scam, internet scams, and phone scams, mail scams. They all gain your trust at some level. And uh, <clears throat> they don't have your best interests at heart. They're just trying to part you from your money. Um, now, you get information uh, through, uh, Connors get information through the Internet, uh, magazine subscriptions, government statistics, telephone directories, obituaries, contest ballots. Uh, that's the most uh, primitive form, I guess. You go to a mall and you fill out a ballot. And they ask you your name, why, or, and then ask you your your age. Why do they do that? There's a reason, and they got a target audience. Right? But the internet, then we'll, we'll get to that in a bit, because it's a whole other world. But, um, so what we see: uh, telemarketing, uh, direct marketing, prize and lottery scams, as I said, theft 
by deception and distraction. This is a big one right at the moment. We'll, we'll come uh, a little bit further. Um, identity theft, emergency scams, and uh, the kind of revenue agency scam. And we'll talk about all these as, as we kind of go through them. Lots of money being lost through these. So, telemarketing is a, is a legitimate business, um, and uh, when things start to go awry, they start asking for money, right, and uh, for certain things, for charities and surveys and that type of stuff. Uh, these things you should be aware of. If people are calling you asking you for money for charities, please check with the Canada Revenue Agency. They have a charities division, they'll tell you what the, what the charity is, if it exists, and also if it, uh, uh, where the money is actually going, right? They want to know. Right? So this one, uh, you've won a valuable prize and, uh, to claim it, you have to, you have to pay some fees. This is huge, absolutely huge. And I'll give you an example. We had a, a couple that, uh, they became involved in this. It was a couple million dollar prize that they'd won. And uh, it, they said that the, the prize was hung up at the border because uh, part of it was a car as well. So you'd had to pay the taxes up front to get everything here. And they got involved in it. And uh, they lost about $30,000. And uh, it's pretty significant, but that's when we got involved. So we got involved in it and started to talk with them and sat with them, just let them know it's a scam. Don't participate in this any farther because you're going to lose more money. So we figured we had everything settled in and, and things things were good. About six months later, we got another call. Say, I think we've been involved and we've been scammed again. And this time they're into a couple hundred thousand dollars and had to remortgage their house, had to you know, borrow from their kids, and, and just, it was just very devastating financially, so they've, they're, they're older, and they, they're living on pensions, now they get a mortgage again, right? So, what happened, and, and this is how the technology changes, uh, where you get a phone call and call display, and I can, I can use this device here, and I can make a call that looks like it's coming from the Hamilton Police Service, the Ottawa Police Service, uh, and a revenue agency. It's called spoofing. Okay, and phone number spoofing. So if your call display will come up, and this is what happened in this instance. They thought it was legitimate because when the call display showed, it showed the Ottawa Police Service. And the scammer said, I'm from the Ottawa Police Service. We have your car and your money. Send more. And that's how it kept going. And then they got another call from the Hamilton Police Service, which was not. And again, right, thinking that it was correct. And that's how they, that's how easy it was. Okay. So it's, uh, <clears throat> it's not, uh, it, it's not easy anymore. Like I said, back when I started doing this business, we didn't have that. And there was none of that stuff. And it, and it makes it very, very difficult because people believe what they see. And, and it's just kind of a simple fact. Can I uh, just interject one thing here, Mike, uh, that I told my group here several times? is that these people are professionals. Um, they have the gift of the gap, but they also have a script. And if you engage them in conversation, you're as good as hooked. Yep, I can pretty much yeah. guarantee and, that. Does, and like Bob says, yeah, they, this is what they do. This is their job, and they're excellent at what they do. If they put that towards other things, it would be, like, be a little bit better for us, but they don't. But the main thing here is if you if you win a prize of any sort, number one is did you did you enter a contest of some sort to get you to win a prize? You shouldn't have to pay any money to claim that prize. That's those are the two things. If it's illegal to, to charge somebody to claim a prize, okay, so you can't do that. And they will ask credit card numbers and everything else, and this will happen in that instance that I was talking about. Credit cards were given over, money was transferred. It was just it devastating. Right? So you, you have to be very, very, very careful. 
So we and talk a little bit about this, but uh, the phone number's there, and you'll have this right there. Okay. So we won't go through that. Um, this is one uh, that is not, it's prevalent in the Halton region. Not so much here. It was for a few years, but uh, um, it's called the bank inspector scam. They need your assistance. It's somebody that allegedly from the bank saying they've got an internal theft going on. Your, your account was involved. And can you help us out? And they'll ask you to withdraw some of the money and meet them, and they'll set up a new account for you, and you'll help, be helping the bank out to catch this person. And I've had several, several of them, like they say, not huge like the like Halton Region does, but a uh, lady was asked to withdraw $5,000 in Dundas and uh, meet them at the corner, like just at, at a street corner, and turn the money over. And then away you go. Right? So she walked right by the police station and handed over five thousand dollars cash when I was last she ever saw it. No description of the person and gone. Right. And it I don't know what it is. People want to help out. I think that's the main thing. They want to help out, and that's the way they're helping out. And it's the bank, and you trust the bank. Right? You don't trust anybody. So the main thing is uh, no financial information. This is a theme that you'll hear over and over again, over the phone, over the internet, no personal information, um, because that can be used at some point to, to scan it. Um, you can hang up immediately, right? Um, now, Star 57, there's a 50 cent or a dollar charge to do that, to find out where the call's coming from. but. Have to keep in mind these scammers are very adept at what they do, and they have cell phones, and they use cell phones basically daily. They'll have uh, they'll they'll do the scam, and then they'll take out the SIM card, put in another SIM card in the phone, so that the number is not traceable. So it's a very uh, very easy way to do things. Absolutely, right. You can because they're 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 registered. They're a registered charity, and through the Canada Revenue Agency, that phone number that was on the screen there, um, they can tell you whether it's a registered charity and if if they're in good standing. Okay, that's how you'd know. But that's that's a good way to do it. Um, ask. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Exactly the way you did. Right. Yeah. If they want your donation, they will do what they can have to do to get your donation. Right. Okay. Bob alluded to this. This scam is uh, very, very prevalent. Anybody got the call? Okay. The, As a matter of fact, I've had several people uh, in the village here who have been taken. Yeah, but there have been a few in the village that I've run across that have been taken with this. Now this, and this is something that people will say, I would never fall for this. And I'm, I'm serious, because... Uh, Exactly. It's your grandchild, and what happens, and if you don't know what happens, and, and it's the scams run out of Montreal, right out of Quebec. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, you'll get a call, and it'll say, Hi, Grandma, it's me. you say, Mike, is that you? Now they got the name, right? They got your grandson's name. And then they start to play on that, and they say, I'm in trouble. I've been in an accident in Montreal. Uh, my voice sounds funny because I I hit my nose, you know, on the on the dashboard or on the steering wheel, and uh, I'm in jail. I got arrested for drunk driving. I'm in jail, and I need money to get out. And don't tell mom and dad because I'll sort it out when I get home, or I don't want them to know some right. But that's what they do, and they create an emergency because what they do is. You know, the grandson you know, gets on the phone and says, I've been in the accident. 
and you need to talk to my lawyer. So they pass it off to another guy who's allegedly a lawyer. Okay. And then they, then they say, this is what we need. And if they can figure out if you're going to give more than what they're asking, they'll call you back a second, third, fourth, fifth time. The highest one I had was $16,000 for this. Okay. So this is what they do. And the, Back in, I did all of these when I came into the office in 2011. I did all of these from 2011 into 2012. I did about 120 of them in Hamilton alone. Okay. And you didn't have any, any loss, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, there's like hundreds of these, right? But, uh, so what we, what you see is, um, or I, as I said, I, I kind of had an idea based on having done all of them myself. They were kind of going into one account. So I've, there's a project that runs uh, called Project Holt, and it's the RCMP, Homeland Security, the FBI, uh, local police services. So all, we all give input into kind of what's happening in our area, and it all gets sorted out at their, their office. So they calculated about 16,000 victims over that time period, okay, and about 25 million in losses, so it's not just a couple of bucks here and there, it's a lot of money, okay, and so what, what happened is uh, they targeted 15 people that they thought, and they arrested 15, and uh, so it stopped, it basically stopped from, uh, from 2014 up until well, six months ago, it started up again. But those 15 were, uh, they were planning to extradite them to the States. Okay, because uh, a lot of this stuff had happened in the, in the U.S. as well. And the penalties that they're going to get in the U.S. are going to be a lot more than what they are in Canada. And so that was just in general how we wanted to see things happen. So this emergency is created. And it's surprising what people will do when that emergency is created. They want to help their grandson. And you get you'll get instructed to go to the Western Union, and they'll tell you what the closest one to your house is, because you can look on the internet. Right? You can see okay, there's a Western Union at the store at you know, the corner of Garth and Fifty Three, right? And they'll tell you to go do that, and that's what people do. Because how many people have used Western Union in their lives? A couple, right? Most people. I've never used it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know the first thing about. I would go and wire money, right? I know now, but I wouldn't if I if I wasn't doing this job, right? And that's what happens, and it's the the unknown, and you're directed, and this is how you do it. And the one the one then, thing I, I I might say about Western Union is everybody knows the name, and if everybody knows the name, then this is by default definition a trustworthy. By the way, um, a Western Union representative is not in on this, okay? They're just the medium by which the money passes. So when they say, go and do a Western Union for me, you're, you, by definition, are dealing with a trustworthy company rather than going to the gas station and buying a card called Ucash. And we'll do you yeah, cash. Get it back on track. Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that that's right. I, I say Western Union, but there are other money transfer. Yeah. Which is very good, yeah. you know, because uh, because when this first started, they they weren't typically doing that because it was all new, right? So now everybody in the business is aware and they ask and they actually will attach a form to your transaction now that says if these things happen and it's basically the script that I just told you uh, it's a scam right so and hopefully we, they, they call us quite often like they're very good Western Union is very good they, they call us quite often with with issues right and we'll come down and talk to the senior and say here's what it is don't do this right? uh, okay so that. So what happens from there is they, they tell you to go down to the 
say the Western Union or MoneyGram, and then they'll say when you get back, call us. They'll give you their phone number, right? Call us and they give give us the money transfer control number. That's the MTCN. If you ever see it, it's the money transfer control number. Give us that number, and then it's cashable. Whoever has that number, it's cashable. So they could be sitting next door to you, or they could be in Montreal, or they could be in Vancouver. Okay. So, um, so that that's what happens. So they're not averse to giving you their phone number. They don't care because they use different cell phones every day. Right? So once it's gone, it's just the cost of doing business. Okay. And when you do uh, phones, you can do a pay as you go, and that's what they typically. Use pay as you go phones. So you pay for the time and that's what you use. Um, you don't have to give your proper name to get a pay as you go phone. Right, so it makes it very difficult to investigate. Uh, okay, so phishing scams. Everybody's heard of this? Please say you have. <laughs> okay. Uh, and they'll give you a, a website that looks very close to what, uh, what the legitimate website is. But um, don't reply to any emails because they can take over your computer very easily uh, with a few few other prompts. But don't give any personal information. No, no. I just say that because uh, that's typically been uh, again they create some sort of uh, issue with with your banking institution, and then they ask you to. They ask you to give the credit cards or personal information. This is a big one. Look for misspelled words. It, it is because a lot of these are uh, from Ni Nigeria, right? So the grasp of the English language isn't quite uh, what it should be, and you'll see the misspelled words. And it's uh, but people will look at it and away they go, right? So that's the main thing. Contact your, your financial institution and ask them if they've, they've sent out an email because there's things that they do as well on their end to try to combat this, right? Because we, we need to look at these things and, and try to stop them because there's money is getting lost. And, you know, you work hard for your money all your life and some scammer comes along and wipes you out in basically five minutes, right? It's not that hard to do anymore. Who's got this call? <laughs> okay. Yeah, can I? Uh, I'll just recite the the one thing that happened to me. I was at a client's house fixing his computer. I was sitting at the client's desk. He called me <laughs> as I was repairing the client's computer. I didn't have time to have my fun, so I just hung up on. But. Uh, guys like me have gotten into this, and there's a few uh, videos on the internet of guys like me that have had fun with these people all day long. I don't, I don't suggest that because uh, uh, because you never know if they just tell you to do something and you actually do it. Um, if they can take over your whole computer, okay. And what happens is they take it over, and it you'll have a message that comes across your screen that says. Uh, call this number or to, you know, because you've got a virus and you call and again, we can clear the virus from it for, from your computer for a couple hundred bucks, right? Doesn't seem like a lot of money, but if you get 10 people a day doing that, it's, uh, it's pretty good. And, and, but it's, it's a lot more than 10 people a day. It's, cause it's worldwide and a lot of these things are run out of China, right? So as prosecutable offenses, it's very difficult because they're not in the country, right? That's the, that's our main problem. So that's why we need to talk about these things, right? And we need to uh, just make you aware that these things are happening. And if they, anybody asks you for remote access to your computers, absolutely not. Um, I, it's funny because I called Microsoft years and years ago when uh, this first started, uh, for my own computer. And it was weird watching my mouse moving around the page, or you, you know, from somebody from this is actually from Microsoft. It's on my computer, but it was just like horrifying, right? So you 
your lost all control of your computer, and, and they can do whatever, and that's what happens. So they can they can take control of it, and then your computer is rendered pretty much uh, useless until you get the virus off. Right, that means wiping off everything, right, off your computer, which is I'm sure you talk about backing up stuff all the time. That's all the why time. you do it. I have uh, I have three different areas that I back things up, which is crazy, but. But I don't want to lose like all my pictures and all that stuff. Stuff that I don't want to lose, I've got backed up, right? So whatever happens, I just unplug it. And, uh, and I, can, I don't have to worry. Anymore. <laughs> um, again, the cre creation of urgency—they use that all the time, indicating there's a threat to your computer. You need to look after this now. Absolutely not. Just stop. <laughs> Shut it off. If you, you know, and then. Uh, and hopefully they haven't taken it over, but it does happen. Right? So if it does, absolutely never, ever, ever uh, give those people any money, okay? Because your computer's not going to get fixed anyway. It's going to take your money. It's done. Right? So, and they'll continue, right? If they get money from you once, they'll try to do it again because they're going to be able to fix the problem. And we need to, we need to continue, and for us, to continue to get more money, right? So. No problem. <laughs> Here I am. Now, so, I, I do do remote repairs. Okay. You have to know and, who you're talking to, right? Yes, and you have to know who you're talking to. It's not just me. There are other technicians out there that if they're trustworthy and you know them, sure, allow them into your computer. But if this is a call out of the blue. Yeah, a cold call is not good. Yeah. So... Antivirus, I'm sure you all have all that stuff. Yep. Antivirus programs, spyware filters, email filters, all that stuff, uh, just to protect yourself. It's it's a different world, totally different world. Because you, you didn't have to worry about this with a computer, right? But now this is a whole, whole different set of problems you've created. Yeah. Dep yeah, it depends on where, if you've called... Like say, say, yeah, Westjet, Ticketmaster, whatever you want to buy some tickets or a trip. Yeah, it is. It, it's fine to, to do that. Um, it's just when somebody calls you and asks you for your for your credit card number, absolutely not, never under any circumstances. And like you were saying, like if they want your money, they will they'll try legitimate ways to do it. Like if they're a legitimate company, they will send you some, something that you can deal with and actually look at. And make your decision from that point, whether you want to donate or whatever that is. Okay. Don't laugh, folks. Don't laugh. This is, this is uh, one of the worst. There's an article uh, three days ago in the Toronto Sun about this. I don't know if anybody reads the Sun. I don't. Uh, generally, I don't. Uh, but it was pointed out to me. Uh, uh, Toronto police arrested uh, a couple of guys for this very scam. And you'll have people, uh, spouses died, and they're looking for a companion. And they will go on a dating site, legitimate or otherwise, and somehow they, they get to non-legitimate sites, and they, they start to correspond with people. And <clears throat> they'll strike up a, a romance over the Internet. They'll say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm stuck in a foreign country. You know, I'm, I'm in the construction business, and I, you know, I didn't pay my taxes, and uh, I need money because I want to come and marry you. Right? And uh, as goofy as that sounds, it happens. It happens a lot. And what happens is <clears throat> money sent, and then yeah, I'm going to the airport tonight, and then a call comes. I'm still stuck here. I need some more money. I need some more money, and uh, the one lady that uh, the Toronto police had, uh, they said she lost in excess of $609,000. Okay. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy. But that's how good these guys are. That's the thing, right? That's how good these guys are and they can, uh, and that she couldn't pay her beauty bill, right? And it, it happens. It happens a lot. And, I, and, I, and I, it, it seems like so far from anybody, but you never know, 
Right. But you have to be aware of this stuff. And you go onto the sites, and this is what happens. And they will, um, they will always need more money for some reason. But there's always a promise that they're going to show up. Right. And which is unfortunate, but that's what happens. <laughs> we talked a little bit about this. Um, I guess it doesn't really apply that much for you guys here. Um, if they don't get in here, but uh, yeah. Okay. So we won't, won't talk too much about that, but, uh, I talk about this because they are, these guys are still around, the vacuum cleaners, the uh, air purifiers, water purification systems. They're still around and they make a very good living at what they do. And I'm not saying all of them are scammers, but, uh, you have to be very wary of people showing up. And this is, you know, talk about a computer, you talk about your home. It's all basically the same premise that they're going to give you something for a great value for very little, but very little turns out to be quite a bit of money. Uh, vacuum cleaners, they'll sell for about $2,200. Right? Air purifiers for about 4000 Okay. And you can buy these units at any retail store. You go and have a look and you can buy them for three or four hundred dollars. Um, uh, water purification systems. Uh, you've seen anywhere from you know, five thousand dollars to sixty thousand dollars, where people are getting their houses rewired and that type of stuff. It's it's there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on. So you have to you have to be aware that these guys are still around, right? And they're still very busy, and very active. And a lot a lot of times when you get to, uh, get involved with it. There's usually a prize, a scratch and win card that says you want a trip to Florida or something, that type of stuff. You call the number and they come up and give you the okay. So that's usually what happens. So, pretty much the same theme, right, as, uh, as with the internet stuff. Never let, let strangers into your home on your computer, uh, phone, right? Better Business Bureau, you can always check. Right, if you're doing business with anybody, you can always check the Better Business Bureau and see if they've uh, got them on file. Uh, you always take the time to compare what you're going to purchase. Right? And that goes for the internet as well. If you're going to buy something, you need to check it out and see, see what the best value is. And uh, um, proper contracts. We talk about this quite a bit, but... Uh, if you have to buy anything in your home or have any work done in your home, that type of stuff, uh, there's a 10 day cooling off period, first of all, you should be aware of under uh, consumer protection legislation. Uh, 10 day cooling off period, <clears throat> if you buy anything in your home, it's over $50. Okay, so if, if you say you buy something and say, I don't really want this, either fax them or, or register a letter to the company and say, I don't want this anymore, they must refund your money under the legislation. And um, then uh, when you do have a proper contract, at least it gives us a starting point if something goes awry. Right. So, uh, okay. I already talked about that. Okay. Um, anybody get these? Price? Yeah. These are price scams. They look very official, right? They'll say, um, like the one in the bottom right there, that's a million dollar price. Uh, in order to stay in, it's like playing a slot machine, right? You, you send money to these guys. It's usually 15 bucks or 20 bucks, something like that. And, uh, <clears throat> to stay in, to go to the next level of the prize, you need to send us more. You need to send us more. Send us more, and it's perpetual. Okay. It's hard to stop this this stuff. And, and when people do get into these issues, and I usually deal with the, a family member to say, change the post office uh, information. Just have it go to a post office box because you could fill this this table within a week when you start participating with these people. And these are from all over. Um, but uh, had a gentleman. Uh, 
That's what he did. No, no issues other than he would go to his mailbox, get these, open them up, and date them. These are all date time sensitive. So have this back by November 3rd and to stay in to win the prize. And he would date them and then he would go through them all and write checks. And continue to write checks. And he was in the same boat for can't pay the bills, right? Because of all the money that was being lost. No. 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 <laughs> but it's, uh, at least not that I've seen, I'll put it that way, not that I've seen, it's probably this huge prize in about 10 years. But anyway, no. There's no. No. No, this is just straight, we want your money. Right? That's all this is. And uh, I just put a couple there because that's, you know, that's what we see. And people will, will continue and they're convinced that they're going to win. Like I say, it's like playing a slot machine, right? You put the next buck in, go, okay, I didn't win. Got to do it again because I'm going to win this time, right? And that's, it's pretty much how the, the principle of it, that it works on. Uh, lots and lots of money coming uh, into those. I just want to, I don't know if they, okay. Um, I'm just going to go back for a second. Publishers Clearinghouse. Anybody know how Publishers Clearinghouse works? I saw Okay, Publishers Clearinghouse is legitimate. Okay. Um, and they do give out money, they give out prizes. Okay, but the only way they give out prizes is if they knock on your door and say, here's your check. That's the only way that that scam, or that scam, that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that no, that's the only way that business works. Okay. They come and they show up at your door and they give you a check. Okay. And I didn't know anything about it, uh, Publishers Clearing House, because we started seeing these prize things, right? People send 1200 bucks here and, you know, right? And, uh, so I called Publishers Clearing House and they have a message that goes for on for about five minutes about if this happens, this is a scam. If this happens, this is a scam. So if you get an email from Publishers Clearing House, you get a phone call from Publishers Clearing House and you get a letter in the mail that's signed by the CEO of Publishers Clearing House. It's not legitimate. And like I say, people buy from Publishers Clearing House and they do enter the contest, but they show up at your door with the prize. So anything else is a scam. Okay, please tell everybody that. that you know. That now does 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 everybody in this room have a bathtub? Okay. Uh, and you know where the bus runs in the village here? You have as much chance of being hit by that bus in your bathtub <laughs> as winning at Publishers Clearinghouse. Okay. I don't know that. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying these aren't legitimate. Okay. No, so so they are out there, um, but that's the way it works, and that's the only way it works. And uh, like I said, we were getting these things, and they're very official looking. And like I say, it's signed by the CEO of Publishers Clearing. So that's what it says, right? <laughs> and, uh, but it's just a made up made up document, and uh, people will send money because it sounds legitimate. Right? But again, it is legitimate. Everything, everything. Uh, when they show up your door and give you the money, that's legitimate. Everything else is a scam. <laughs> I do it all the time. <laughs> um, I want to just talk about this for a little bit. Um, this has been a uh, bit of a, a problem. Okay, so we have people show up. You're walking down the street, and people will drive up in a car and say, I need to know where the, the hospital is, okay? And because uh, there's an emergency created, and then they want to give you a piece of jewelry for your help, right? That sounds crazy, but this happens, and it happens so fast, and I've talked to a lot of people that have, this has happened to, that it was just so quick that they go, they, they put a, a, a necklace around your neck, and they take your gold one, and off they go, right? You don't realize it till you get home. This is something that if anybody approaches you, you gotta stay away, right? Talk at a distance because if once they get close, I don't know, I'd like to see them do it actually because it's, because it's, it's very quick, 
because it's very quick, and there are a lot of people have lost very sentimental pieces right off, right off the bodies, right rings, everything else. It's like, well, what do you want? <laughs> but uh, uh, be aware of that. So if somebody does, just make sure they keep a distance, and you keep distance from them. And if you're not comfortable, just keep walking, right? Because it, it happens. And it, uh, we were getting a lot in the east end of the city, uh, but it's moved up to the mountain, and they're very, very, very active. And this, this is something to watch for. Okay. Uh, and especially, um, especially if you've got uh, you got a chain around your neck, and they size you up pretty quickly at the value of the chain, right? and they take it. And and people don't realize until we get home, right? Because they go to take the thing off. And it's, <laughs> what happened? Right? Yeah, and uh, and they're so quick. We don't get a description of them. We don't get a description of the car. Nothing. Because they don't really realize what's happening. Right? Go after it. Um, it is. It's, it's staggering how quick, how quickly it happens. And I, because I, the last one I dealt with, the lady said I wanted absolutely nothing to do with these people. Right? And, uh, they kept approaching, approaching, and, and they finally got her, her chain off. And she didn't know it. All right. This was a new section brought into the criminal code a few years ago because of the issues of over the internet, over credit cards, that type of stuff, identity theft. And <laughs> it's an unauthorized collection of uh, fraudulent use of someone's personal information. Right. So that's the basic. That's what it is. So if somebody gets your gets your identification and then starts to use it. That's identity theft. That can be very devastating. And you've seen people where they've, uh, identity theft has happened where they've, uh, changed mortgages over. Right? So you, you don't even own your house anymore. And it's, it's crazy. The house gets sold and it, it prevents a huge problem because you've got a buyer who's legitimate. You've got a, a current owner who's the seller who's a legitimate owner who owns the house. Right? But the problem being is, all that stuff is is uh, very very. Uh, uh, when somebody uses your identification, the the mess that it creates for you afterwards, and trying to get things straightened out through like Equifax and TransUnion, just to see where, uh, see what's happened, what credit cards have been violated, what uh, you know, if your your home's been sold on you, that type of stuff. Who so has right now their social insurance number with them? What do you need your social insurance number for? Yeah. And getting a job, open up a bank account, right? Those are the only things you need it for. Right? You should have it in a safe, safe place at home. <clears throat> Somebody gets your social insurance number, it's it's licensed to go. Right? Because if you have uh, uh, applying for credit cards, and uh, there's, I did the, uh, the fraud course a few years ago. And, uh, they talked about a guy in BC that, uh, you know, when you, in apartment buildings, you have mail that's undelivered, right? Where do you put it? Up top, right? Up top of the mailboxes so anybody can see it and take it. That's all this guy did. He would go around and he would take everybody's mail that wasn't delivered. And, uh, he would get things like a government check, a SIN number on it, and then he would go to the University of British Columbia, uh, to the library there, and sit and make applications for credit cards at 23 different computers. Okay? You got that information? It's easy, right? So, <clears throat> he found out that you couldn't apply for the same card from the same internet provider address, so he would move to the next computer. Okay? And he would do it 23 times, and he would do that all night. And uh, the amount of cash, government checks he had coming to him was astronomical. Like it was just like they showed a picture of the of his house, I guess, the table of everything that he had just laid out ready to go. And he, not a really bright guy, but easy to do, right? If you have the proper information, that's what I say. Any of that information, you don't give out. 
and social insurance number, you lose your wallet. You don't know where that's going to wind up. And so, um, <clears throat> you can, yeah. Uh, you mean yeah. a new number is a different number? No, no, no. You're issued the same number, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, you can get a new card, but yeah, no, it's the same. It's the same social insurance number. Right? So that's why you keep it in the same place at home. And they can say that guy, he did that, and he did it, and uh, if you go and get like a Sears card, this card, you know, because it's a few years ago, but that's how easy it is, right? And they're yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You never give your social insurance number to anybody. Right? No reason. Yeah. 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 And there's no reason. You don't have to. Right? That's part of the legislation. You don't have to give your credit card or your social insurance number. Right? Um, talk about this. Uh, so information, how they get the information is uh, from a business or other institution by stealing records or bribing an employee. It happens, right? It's good information, good easy money, good 50 bucks and you get somebody's information, right? Um, internet phishing, we talked about that. That's a big, a big one. And the common theme here is your information is private. Okay? Anybody on Facebook here? Anybody have more than one Facebook account? Yeah. If you have one more than Facebook, one more than one Facebook account, um, your account can be searched through your email address. Right. So if you have two accounts with the same email address, it's out there. Right. It's the amount of information when you're on like Twitter and uh, any of the social media sites. Right, they're they're great. They're great sites, except your information is private. And they had a move to make everything fairly private in Facebook and everything else. But if you are looking at it, go into your privacy settings and make it as private as you possibly can. Okay, nobody should be able to see anything other than your name. Okay, pictures. Please don't put pictures. Pictures on because. People can look at it and see, see who you are. Right? So that that information is very, very public, and anybody can get it. And that's the problem with it. It's it's like I say, it's fun and everything else, and it's good to connect with people and everything else. But you have to make it private and connect only people you know. Right? Uh, one thing about this privacy business um, years ago. Uh, not that long ago, maybe 10 years ago, um, there was a real concern with children, the internet, and the socialization of the internet. And there was a big, big campaign on to inform children and their parents about putting stuff on the internet. Once it's there, it never goes away. Um, there are people out there still who know how to search the, the deepest, darkest parts of the internet for the information that they want. And sometimes that information is very, very dangerous. But that's for children. Those same techniques work for adults. Okay? If you've put something out there, it's there. It's findable. Okay? Just keep that in mind. If you ever put it out there, it's findable. So, no. no it's out, it's out it's there. It's out there. And it never goes away. It never, ever goes away. So, with that in mind, if things start to happen that you might say to yourself, gee, that's strange. Just remember. There might be a piece of information out there that someone has found about you. Okay? Yep. Go ahead. With Facebook, if, if you have a direct tweet from a legitimate website to check this out, let's say you're trying to get a Facebook account, will you be exposing yourself or yourself? 
if you're logged in, if you're log, if you're logged into your Facebook account at the time. Well, I don't have a, a yeah. Facebook account. Yeah. It. Can yeah, yeah. The the uh, corporations companies will send you to their Facebook page to get information about, them. but uh, they can learn an awful lot more about you if at the time you are logged into your Facebook account when you do that. You have to think that all that information, we have pictures on the internet um, through Facebook and that any other like those types of sites. I talk about Facebook, but there are other sites as well. Um, <clears throat> remember in Vancouver when they lost the Stanley Cup a few years ago, 2010? Remember that? Um, remember I had all the riots, right? Um, there's a, they had a, a site where they had pictures of the streets, right? And the cameras, like, incredible. Like, it, I could see, like, a hundred yards away and I could see you just as clear as what I'm seeing you now, right? And they had a, let's see how many people we can tag into this picture. So people were writing, you know, you're, you're out there, somebody writes your name in, and it links to your, you know, your Facebook address. Everything kind of links together, right? That's how they solved a lot of the, the damage they got done through that site and it was absolutely incredible that people were tagged in and uh, so <clears throat> they got face recognition software now you, you can plug it in and search the internet and boom comes up like page right? you know so that's why you kind of keep everything you keep everything private which is very very uh, like <laughs> to say the least yeah. okay Fishing is, uh, they're, they're asking uh, for information. They'll make a site, uh, a, a website look legitimate, and then they'll start asking you for personal information. Um, and that's what it is. So they're asking you through a falsification of a, a website. And I talked about financial institutions. That was kind of the, the main stay of how they were doing things. Yeah, another yeah. one could be something like Amazon. Yeah. Okay. If you if you have uh, an account on Amazon or an account on any other site where you've purchased stuff, even Sears, you get an email that says uh, there may be a problem with your Amazon account. Please click on this link and fill in the information. Yeah. That's phishing. Now, you may get th that email about an Amazon account if you don't have one. That's the guy just casting out there and reeling back, okay, to see who bites. And that's fish. And people do. Yeah, so they're, they're just trying to get, get your personal information, right? And, and uh, you'd be surprised how many people actually give it. How many people have got this call? This is, uh, this is a very uh, new, but... Um, very prolific period at the moment. They're, and people have lost lots of money from, from this. So they call and they all identify themselves as somebody from Canada Revenue. And uh, they, they state you have an outstanding tax bill. And I've seen it with, uh, you know, spouses died. You know, your husband looked after all the taxes. Well, he didn't pay, so you have to. And if you've never looked after your finances, how do you know? Right? And the thing is, the RCMP will never say they're coming down to arrest you. That's not the way they work, right? They, but, um, but the fear of being arrested, and people have never had any involvement with the police before, um, they will, they will go and they will do the transfer, right? I had one, and as odd as this sounds, that he was told to go buy cash cards, right? Um, Afro Canada pivot cards, they call them. He was told to go buy cards. So he, he went and bought, I think, uh, it was about $1,500, I think, of, of cards. And to get home and give them the PIN number that's on the back. And that makes the card cashable. Right? Now, Canada Revenue, do you think they're going to do that? They're going to ask you to do that? No, they're not. Right? They're going to send you one of those letters, right? <laughs> I think it's the green that they will <laughs> um, but they send you one of those letters. They still send you a letter, and you deal with them through the, co 
correspondence with them. They're not going to say, we're coming down to arrest you because you owe. Um, and people get panicked because they think they're going to get arrested. And that's not the way they do business. No, no. So what you, you'd have to call uh, call them and say, I've got this thing. Yeah. Because they want to know, too, because they're trying to combat all this stuff, right, as, as well. Yeah. 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 And it comes back to CRA because the bottom line there is spoofing, right? Because they do. They all come back to an Ottawa number and it's usually, right? But the funny part is it wouldn't come back to Ottawa. I think it's in New Brunswick, isn't it? Or yeah, Summerside, PEI, PEI, PEI. Uh, yeah. Winnipeg, King, yeah. where they're supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, but that's, that's how they do it. And that's how you kind of know that they're not in the country when you're doing this, right? Because it's not in, not in the right place, right? Um, yeah, so again, yeah, again, directed to send through a money transfer service, right? How many times have you ever paid a tax bill through a money transfer service? I, I never have, but uh, no, you, you don't do that. Uh, Got so a couple of minutes for questions? Uh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely, no, I just want to, whoops. Um, can't see. No, that's not, uh, you're gonna, you've got, uh, I'll give you this, um, uh, I'll give this after, so don't, don't worry about copying that down. Okay. Yeah, so if you have, uh, if you have any questions, by all means. That's a new one. I haven't, I haven't heard that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I always lock my car. Yeah, I always lock my car. Yeah. Uh, pretty much every day. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, that's, but that's uh, Fred, only if they uh, if they have a loss. Okay. Yeah. If before. Let me answer okay. this. Okay. Okay. Um, we have uh, there are two of us in the in our unit. Okay. It's probably one of the busiest places I ever worked. But we go through everything, and I know if there's not a loss, there's a lot of times that uh, our frontline officers are very busy. Right, so we can't respond to everything. Okay. But when we do get the reports in, I still investigate. Right? I investigate as far as I can take it. Because whether it's a loss or not, it's still a fraud. Right? So you have to look at it. Because there might be something there that is a clue of, of somewhere to go. Right? So you have to go through everything and you have to look at it and you have to make sure that it's done properly. Because um, if you don't, you're going to miss some stuff. Right, and that's why I say when I did all the grandson scans, I was able to get a pattern, right, and, and see where the money was going. And that's if if it's kind of spread out, it, it makes it very difficult because you don't have that information at your fingertips. You've actually done it yourself. Um, but if if there's no loss, I don't mind. Uh, like our our units there, give us a call. Uh, you can have a uh, you can at least have a discussion about it and see what what you have. Right, and if the value information you have is valuable or not, I don't have any issue with that. I'd rather get this up front. And if we can stop, you know, at least one of these groups from doing this, because they're groups, it's not just one person. It's, it's very organized, and uh, the money goes to a lot of places they won't, you don't really want to talk about. Right? But, um, but that's what happens. And so, um, yeah, I, I absolutely. 
I, I would like to, because I, I got one right now that I'm, I'm working on. There's no loss, but it's information that I didn't have. Exactly. And information so, you didn't have. And there may be that one little piece that you've been looking for for the last two months, and this guy has it, and he doesn't know it. Yeah. Mike would be happy to talk to yeah. I well, appreciate that. <laughs> sure. Sure. Thanks very much, Mike. Uh, we've, uh, we're at 2 o'clock now, folks. we got a couple uh, more questions if you, if you don't mind. Yeah, okay, sure. sure. My question was, how could somebody get a police number for a telephone call? Well, that's what I was going to ask. What do you mean for? Well, you say they gave him his number. Oh, uh, well, I can do this on my telephone. I, yeah. I I can do this on my phone. I can make my phone look like say it's from mine. Yeah, make it look like it's his phone. Yeah. But when you call, when you call the number, okay, his phone doesn't ring mine. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty scary stuff. Uh, right, but it's I've just fooled the phone. If you call the number that you look, you think you're calling that you saw, in fact, my phone will ring. I'm not going to tell you that. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe there was a hat inside. Um, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's long standing. That it's just uh, yeah, a lot of people don't uh, at least put it in the trunk. <laughs> you know. Or or you can yeah. do what my wife does. You can do what my wife does. Sit in a car till I come back. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's it, it's the opportunity, and I, I do these pretty much daily. And the biggest thing is I, that money I can use to help my kids and my grandkids, right? And it's not I want all the money for myself. It's like this is the amount that I can help a lot of people with this. And I give an example. I had a a good example actually. A lady, she's deceased now. She was eighty-seven, and this is how you kind of have to. Uh, bear with me here, but she's 87 years old. She gets a prize letter. So she calls them. Now they got her phone number, so now they're calling. And they're relentless. When they start to call, they will continue to call. Right? And uh, it's very, very... So anyway, she uh, she's told uh, that she's won the prize, but she needs to send $12,000 uh, to claim it. So she goes down to the bank, withdraws $12,000 in $100 bills. Now, what bank would ask a question or two? But anyway, the bank did. Uh, they counted up their $12,000, and she's told to put the $12,000 in a magazine and uh, stuff it in the magazine, send it through uh, through the mail, and if anybody asks me, just tell them it's wedding photos. Okay. Now, she's got a little bit of confusion going on at the time, too. Uh, we get a little bit of dementia. Okay, so with all that, um, she sends it off. Now her nephew, who was her power of attorney, caught it because she, because he was checking her bank all the time because there were some things that she was doing because she, because of the confusion. Right, so she, he checked it and caught it, and uh, so he sent. She had already sent the money off. Probably went to the post office. Didn't stop the parcel. He was already on route. Um, so. They report it to us. I got it the next morning. And unfortunately, we're going to BC. Um, so I had a three-hour time delay to work with. 
And so I, I called and I, I got kind of the post from DC, uh, got the inspectors involved, <coughs> and they, uh, they stopped it. Like it, it was on the route to be delivered and they stopped it just before it, uh, it got there. So they got the package. So we set up and said, can you guys, Dr. the RCMP out there, can you make up another package and get it delivered? Right. And then when they when we got it, so uh, ultimately that's, it didn't get delivered, they didn't see the door, but the guy came to the post office and picked it up. And uh, the, the good part was that the uh, RCMP detachment was attached to the end of the post in, in Surrey. Right, so it wasn't it wasn't a big stretch, right? So, so he shows up, and uh, one of the postal inspectors was there, and he said, "Wait a minute, that's our guy." Right? And uh, so they arrested him. And he actually just got convicted. So we got the twelve thousand bucks back and got arrested. So, yeah, so that's a good story. But I talked to her, and I said, "Why would you do that?" Right? And she said, "Because my grandkids. I got a lot of I got seven or eight grandkids, and uh, I could use that money to really help them out get through university and that type of stuff." And that was what. Her intention was so it wasn't I'm going on a trip, right? And then taking this money and going you know, here. So that's that's basically what it is, and and that's a pretty constant thing with everybody else I deal with. Right? It's not really for themselves because they're setting their lives. Right? They're, they're okay and financially, they don't have to have to worry about this. The Nigerian scams, uh, you've heard the name before. They work on greed. They are all about greed. Uh, I have even heard of. Uh, CEOs of large companies being taken by a Nigerian scam. Yeah, I haven't even talked about that because that's the one you've won three hundred or three million dollars. Well, no, you haven't right won now. it. Uh, I am Doctor Mbutu oh, from, yeah, Niger- from Nigeria, and my father was the Minister of Revenue. Okay, well, the first and thing he I- managed to put away twenty-one million dollars. Now, all we need to do is. Have you opened a little bank account? We can shoot it in there for you. Okay, that's how it works. Yeah, but um, people will do that, right? But you got to ask yourself one question: Who do I know in Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the first one, right? But but people do, and they they will get a check and they'll deposit it in their bank, and it looks okay, and they're told to take the money and transfer it to somebody else. Take this portion for yourself and transfer this portion to somebody else. And then you're out 10,000 bucks or whatever. Right? Now you're stuck. Because the bank's not going to cover that. That's just, you know, the, the scams were around long enough for which you know that it's there. Um, so typically they don't, they won't, wouldn't cover it. And so now you're paying back 10,000 bucks for a scam. You know, so it's, <laughs> well, but a lot of them, like that, well, they'll say, we'll buy your truck, right? Say, just for easy figure, and say it's $2,000, they're going to send you a check for 10 Take the, take the 10 uh, take 2000 bucks for your truck, and ship the eight back because we, we had a mistake in our check, right? Um, when we wrote it to you. Send it back to us, so they send it back, and then the check's not legitimate. And usually, the money comes out of their account. All right, uh, folks, folks, we've, we've pretty much gone over our time. It's uh, 10 after 2. Thank you so much for coming. I will have this video uh, with Mike up uh, on, our, uh, on our YouTube page uh, as quickly as possible, if not today, tomorrow for sure. And uh, if you have any more questions about this, um, put your question in the form of an email. And uh, I have Mike's email address. Um, perhaps I could send yep. it off to him and, and uh, we can get a reply. Uh, about some important question you may have. Okay? Yep. Thanks very much, okay. Mike. We really do appreciate you having me. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate you having me. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.